Okay, welcome back to our uh, second to last video on the uh, <coughs> security uh, restraints and whatnot. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is um, restraint of a person causing damage. Okay, um, now I'm going to read a couple of things out first or explain a couple of things about uh, damage. Okay, so there's different types of damages. Okay, there's a, a thing we call um, a willful damage, okay, in New Zealand, uh, where somebody is willfully, through their own choice, uh, causing damage, okay, and um, willful damage is, um, it's called willful damage in the um, uh, 1981 Summary Offences Act, okay, um, and yet in the uh, Crimes Act 1961, under Section 269, it's 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 clarified as intentional uh, damage. So, if you hear the word willful damage and intentional damage, they're pretty much uh, one of the same sort of thing. Okay, similar. Okay. Um, however, let's let's start off with the uh, Summary Offences Act 1981. Willful damage. Okay, willful damage is basically, in, in the Summary Offences Act, is where somebody is on your property, okay, you're the, you're the owner, occupier, or you're the security officer looking after that property, and you come across somebody that's um, willfully damaging the property, or intentionally damaging the property, okay. Now, <clears throat> That means they're smashing things up, okay? They are literally breaking and smashing things, smashing windows, kicking a car in, um, smashing car windows. They've got a baseball bat or whatever they're using, rock, and they're literally damaging things, like physically damaging things, okay? Violently damaging things, all right? That's willful damage. So they're, it's intentional. They're inten intentionally committing that damage, okay? and or they are acting in a, a reckless manner okay uh, they're driving a car on the property uh, recklessly being stupid and crashing in and damaging things okay that's willful damage it comes under willful damage now when a person's doing that on your property and you're the owner occupier or you have authority over that property you rent that property or you're a security officer looking after that property you have the right to arrest a person at any time of the day or at any time of the night. You can make a citizen's arrest, okay? So you can play, stop that person from what they're doing and make a citizen's arrest. Once you do that, you then have to uh, hand that person over. You've got to do it using uh, minimum force again, okay? The least amount of force possible. Um, and you've got to then hand that person over to the uh, police um, as soon as possible, okay? Uh, very important. Now, a person that's committing that kind of crime on your property, um, the punishment for that is um, up to three months in prison, okay? Anything up to three months in prison, not exceeding three months, just up to three months, or up to a $2,000 fine, okay? Um, so similar to uh, trespassing, except um, you have the right to arrest straight away and it's an extra thousand dollars more than trespassing okay for the punishment now just be aware that um, there's something else that's completely different to willful damage and that's uh, I'm going to read it here graffiti somebody that's committing graffiti uh, vandalism tagging defacing okay now somebody somebody that's graffitiing your property or vandalizing it by tagging and defacing it that means they're spray painting they're throwing paint on stuff they're throwing mud at stuff or whatever they're defacing it they're, they're, or doing graffiti drawing using a pen marker pen or whatever that's different to uh, van that's different to willful damage however um, it you can still arrest carry out a citizen's arrest on that person if they're doing that on your property under the uh, Summary Offences Act 1981 okay if it's on your property at any time of the day 
or the day. Okay, now what is the punishment for that? It could be community-based service or um, you know, doing things for the community, cleaning up graffiti and stuff like that. Um, or a, up to a $2,000 fine, okay? Or both. So that means you could receive community service for a period of time, decided by the judge, depending on the damage you've done, and up to a $2,000 fine, okay? If you're caught doing that sort of thing on somebody's property, and that person, the, the property owner or the security officer catches you doing that, okay? They can place you under arrest, okay? And um, obviously you have to be handed over to the police as soon as possible. And of course it's got to be done by minimum force. So that's the 1981 Summary Offences Act. I wanted to cover that because it's completely different to the 1961 um, Crimes Act. So let's get into the Crimes Act now. In the Crimes Act, willful damage is called intentional damage, which is the same thing, only it's done out there in the public, okay, out on a public road, uh, at a public park, or something like that. Now, again, if the person is intentionally damaging something, smashing windows, breaking things, breaking locks, kicking doors in, uh, doing whatever they're smashing, they're physically breaking things, okay, that's intentional damage, okay. Now the punishment is a lot more severe here. Okay, um, under the Crimes Act, if they're doing intentional damage out there in public, to public property, okay, um, they can receive up to seven years imprisonment, okay, so that's a long time, up to seven years, and not, not exceeding seven years, so they can get anything up to seven years in prison for, for doing willful damage, or should I say intentional damage out in the public, okay, they're quite serious huge difference to on uh, personal property okay and uh, again that's even intentional or reckless okay it's the same thing if somebody's doing something recklessly they're doing a wheel spin and they crash into something okay that's in, that's intentional damage it's, it comes under that recklessness comes under the intentional damage okay they knew the chances were that they could cause damage by their act that what they were doing so um, the other thing is, if a person is causing damage out in the public to something that could cause serious, uh, could cause death, okay, life threatening. For example, would be somebody cutting somebody else's um, uh, brake lines under their car, okay. That would be uh, intentional damage, okay. Um, where it cause, could cause death, okay? There's a likelihood that it could cause death. They could receive up to 10 years imprisonment, nothing more than 10 years. So they could receive another three years uh, if there's life, uh, it, it's likely to cause uh, a danger to life, okay, a person's life. What's another one? Um, another one could be letting down a person's car tires, okay? It's not really damage. Let's let's rephrase that. I wouldn't call that damaging. Uh, it could quite possibly, if they're letting down someone's car tires, and that led to that car crashing, damaging the car or damaging uh, property and a person's life uh, coming into danger because their tires have been let down. Okay, and they're not at the proper pressure. Okay, that would be clearly to me uh, intentional damage. Okay, so they haven't actually committed damage at that point. Um, difficult one, but once the damage has been occurred, okay, and you knew who that person was, okay, they could be placed under arrest. Um, so anything where someone's damaging something where it could cause harm, um, you know, it could be anything, okay, you just got to let the, let the brain think if you come across that kind of thing out in the public. So because those, those last two that I just mentioned uh, carry up to seven years or up to ten years imprisonment um, where, where it could, you know, out in the public, that means those offences, uh, a person could be arrested, okay? Um, you, that person could, 
could be placed under citizen's arrest um, for doing that, okay, because they carry uh, that, such a harsh penalty, all right. So, um, as far as graffiti, vandalism and tagging and defacing uh, goes in the public arena, um, they're still quite serious, but they're not overly, you know, it's not, not too much of a major, but they are serious, okay? And, I, and I, to tell you the truth, I haven't covered those, okay? Um, more likely you'd be detaining the person for, for doing those type of things under the Crimes Act. Anyway, I want to get back into what we're doing, it, doing this for, which is causing damage. So I wanted to cover those things just very briefly so that we're on the, on the same uh, understanding. There's two different uh, punishments and severity, one to do with on your property, which is the Summary Offences Act 1981, and the 1961 Crimes Act, which is to do out in the public um, domain. So now, if somebody's doing damage, it, it, it's gonna depend on the uh, degree of damage a person's doing, how violent are they being, how much damage are they causing, um, are they more at danger to damaging property uh, but not really much of a danger to you um, or anybody else, um, are they damaging property and it looks like they're very aggressive and they're going to potentially be a danger to yourself as well if you go to try and stop them. These are things that I can't answer because only you can uh, know that when you come across the scenario of that. So what I'm going to try and do is, is, is cover it as best I can. So I'll just ask Teresa to come up here just quickly. Okay, so Teresa's got like um, a block of wood that we just found lying around and she's going to pretend that this is a, um, a brick, okay? We'll pretend that it's a brick. Now a person could be doing damage to property um, that's not theirs, obviously, and they don't have, uh, you know, um, any interest in it. Um, however, let's just say that she's got this brick here and she's doing damage with it, or you could come across a person that's doing damage to property that doesn't have a weapon, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do, the first thing that we would do is if we came across um, Teresa here with that brick doing damage and she's seen us, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be treating this as a blunt instrument, okay, or a blunt weapon, all right, because she could hit us with it, strike us with it. So, well, I've already covered uh, what to do in the case of a blunt uh, weapon, okay, we keep our distance, okay, and we want to talk to the person, okay. Try and stop them from doing what they're doing by talking to them, okay? Ask them, ask them to stop, okay? Or tell them that they've got to stop. They're breaking the law with what they're doing, okay? Ask them to put, it, put, the, put the weapon down or tell them to put it down, okay? Um, if we come across them, all right? So the first thing I'd be doing is at a safe distance. I'd be, if, if she recognised she was doing damage and um, I seen she's got a weapon and she recognises me, the first thing I'm going to do is keep my distance and tell her, hey, 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 stop doing what you're doing, you can't do that, you're breaking the law. You need to put the weapon down. You can't be doing that. What are you doing that for? What are you, what are you doing that for? Because you want to. You can't do that. Is that your property? I don't care. You don't care? You can't be doing that. Alright? You can't be doing that. You've got to put the weapon down. Okay? Now, all we can do really is try and tell this person to stop what they're doing. They've got this weapon here. They're aware of us. Okay? Now, as a security officer in New Zealand, you don't have pepper spray. So we can't use pepper spray on this person. But we don't want to use that straight away anyway, even if we did. Because this person, we've, um, we've got to try and talk to them first. Minimum force. The least amount of force is no force at all, in my opinion. So we need to try and stop this person from doing what they're doing by talking to them through verbal and body language. Okay, I've covered it all before. Now, because she's aware of us, we can't just sneak up on her and stop her from doing what she's doing. Okay? Um, we have to talk to her. The other thing that we've got to do is 
because we don't have pepper spray, if she became a, a, a danger to us, all we can do is back away. Okay? We can't pepper spray her because you don't have pepper spray. You can't taser her because we don't have a taser. Okay? All we could do is back away and call for the police. Okay? If she was a direct danger to us or others. Okay? Back everybody away. Alright? Distance is your best friend. Okay? So most of the stuff you'll see that we've already covered come into um, not only this particular situation but the next video that we're going to be doing as well. Okay, however, what if she um, had her back to us? If she had her back to us and she was smashing this thing here, okay, now we've got a choice. We could get her attention. Hey, 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 what are you doing? You can't be doing that. You know what I mean? And we could try and stop the person, okay? We could approach them and, 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 and be saying, hey, 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 you can't be doing that and take, take the weapon off her, okay? We could do all of that. Um, it would depend on the nature of the situation. How aggressive is this person? You've got to make a judgment call at the time. Okay. If you're unsure, keep your distance. Okay. So if we thought that it was okay to um, let the person know that we're here and try and stop them that way, well, that's optional. Okay. The next one would be if this person's like really aggressive, they're smashing windows, they're breaking things, they're swearing, they're they're just amped up and they are going to do just telling the person to stop you you know that that's just not going to work the chances are that's just not going to work we may need to if we've got an opportunity to take this person uh, from behind that's what we're going, we can do okay so let's say she's got her back to us what I want to do is I want to walk straight come straight up behind her her back here towards her spine okay I don't want to come out on the sides of her where she can see me with her peripheral vision all right see me on the side i don't want to certainly don't want to come around this side as well where she might see me okay i've got to come straight behind her spine so if we move teresa just over to here in front of the camera you'll see where teresa is there i want to be coming straight up behind her back here all right i don't want to be coming out to the sides where she could spot me the other thing I want to do is, as I'm um, sneaking up behind her, I want to be quiet, okay? I don't want to be um, sliding my feet at this point. I just want to be coming up nice and slow and quietly, okay? And I don't want to be looking directly at her to a certain degree. I want to be focusing on her generally, but not eyeballing the back of her because we as humans have a thing we call sixth sense or six cents cents okay where we can pick up something where somebody's watching us or somebody's looking or something's wrong we don't want to give this person that opportunity to know or to feel something's wrong and turn around okay so we need to not look directly at her like we're coming in to target her we are but we need to take that that away if that makes any sense to you okay so the next thing I want to do, I want to know where the weapon is. I can see where the weapon is. It's in the right hand. So what I'm going to do here is be coming up behind her, okay? Just come around this side, um, Teresa, so that they can see. The weapon's in her right hand, okay? She's causing damage, okay? I want to come up behind her, get right in between here, okay? I'll do it fast, all right? Okay, and I want to have her here like this, off balance, okay, and back here. Now, if she tries to move the weapon to her front, go try and move the weapon, <laughs> she can't, okay? So drop the weapon, drop the weapon, okay, she dropped the weapon. Very painful, okay, very quick uh, and swift. I haven't hurt her in any way, okay, but I have managed to get the weapon out of her hand. So I'll put Teresa here in the front here, Okay, just over this way here so you can see we're coming from this angle and I'll come in from this side so you can see again. Alright, so what I'm doing is she's got the weapon there. Okay, I don't, I'm not worried about her other hand. She's got her other hand in her, um, her jacket at the moment. That, I, I'm not interested in that. So I'm coming up behind her. Alright, and I've got her here. Got her off balance. She's in my centre. Okay, try and stand up. Can't. Drop the weapon. 
Drop it. Okay. So what we're basically doing there is arm barring her, her um, arm. What we're doing here, as she's coming back, as I'm coming up, behind the, directly behind her back, I'm coming over her chest area, pulling her neck back, okay, to the side, and at the same time my arm's coming over, it's grabbing this arm here, I can lock it into my body, okay, so that she can't pull it out, and slide my hand down to where her wrist area is, and her hand, okay, and I pull back her elbow against my body, like so, okay, right, and of course we have her off balance. And then we just apply pressure to make them drop the weapon. Could be a baseball bat, it could be a bottle, it could be a brick, it could be a rock, it could be an iron bar, it could be anything, okay? So, the only reason why I'm attacking her or um, coming in to restrain and stop her from behind is because she can't see me, right? Obviously, if she turned around, and she spotted me, then I'd be, hey, hey, what are you doing? All right? Okay, she, she'd probably be thinking, oh, oh hey, he looked like he was sneaking up on me. But I'd be, hey, oh, what are you doing? All right? Um, because she's got a weapon. We've got to be careful because she's got a weapon. Okay? So could we use this particular technique for somebody um, that had a blunt instrument weapon uh, in the previous video? Yes, we could. Could we do the same technique for someone that's got a, um, a sharp weapon? Yes, we could, but you've got to be a lot more careful, okay? Um, better if you had pepper spray or a taser, not a problem, problem solved, okay? But we're not carrying around those, okay? So that's just, we've just got to do what we've got to do, okay? If it's out of our league, call the police, okay? Um, call for backup security, okay? Better to have more numbers there, okay? In case the person does try and attack in some way okay distance is your best friend whenever you're unsure create distance okay um what if the person's just um not using this not using a weapon she might be kicking a car in or something she's kicking this car in or whatever okay well we just we go up and we can try and stop the person if you feel that you can it's a normal story you feel that you can handle this person then go for it okay if you don't feel you can handle it call in for backup okay if you think they're far too aggressive or far too big for you okay or you're dealing with more than one person call for backup call the police right it's, 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 it's not rocket science with this stuff okay but let's say we're dealing with one person and she's trying to kick the car in okay all right she's trying to kick the car in uh, you're the security officer, you're dealing with the property, she's breaking the law, okay, we can arrest her, okay, so she's trying to kick the car and we could be like, hey, 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 what are you doing, stop, what are you doing, man, what are you doing, hey, what are you doing, okay, so we could just do anything, we could do a bear hug, we could do whatever we wanted to do to try and stop this person, okay, within reason, okay, it has to be minimum force, okay, the best way to stop the person is get in between you and whatever they're damaging, okay, if she's, you know what I mean, how do we do that, let's say she's damaging something over here, she's kicking it in, right, first thing we do, we could come up behind and we could take the person down, okay, or keep damaging it, we could come round if they see us, Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't, what are you doing? All right? Get back, you can't be damaging that. All right? And we can, um, we can physically get in the way, push them back, and stop them from doing it. Doing the damage. Okay? What if the person wants to get past you? Well, um, there's a number of things we can do. One, we don't want the person to get close enough to us to, um, okay, let's for example, let's say this is the, the, the car over here and Teresa's coming in to want to carry on kicking in the car or back her off and she wants to come in and kick the car in, okay? I don't want her to get to this car, 
okay? But I don't want her to get close enough to me either, all right, where she could hit me, all right? Because I'm still a, at danger of being hit as well. So I'm, I'm going into preventing damage, not only to the property, but to myself now as well, because I've put myself in it, haven't I? Okay? So she's coming in to damage the property. Oh no, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back. Okay? Alright, stay back. Okay, so if she's coming towards me, okay, to get to this property to damage it, I could see it as she's coming straight towards me, her intent may be to kick me, to hit me. Right, so I might go straight into defensive mode to maintain that distance. It might be a push, it might be a kick. Okay. Um, but can I place her under um, arrest? Yes, I could place her under citizen's arrest for the damage that she's been causing. Okay, yes I can. Right. Okay, so what else can what else can I say? It's, it's pretty simple. Um, we don't have to let the person go, but we don't have to let them leave, okay, we can physically stop them um, and hold them here, okay. Some people like to call it detain them, other people would clearly just say it's, you're, you're, committed, you're doing a citizen's arrest, okay, they're pretty much one of the same thing, okay, you're, you're keeping the person there until the police arrive. We don't want to just let the person go, they've committed all this damage and they've got to pay for it. Okay, um, we can do lots of other things, uh, any of the other techniques that we've done in the past to uh, get control of this person, to keep them here, okay, and hold them here until the police arrive. Um, anything, Teresa? Anything to add? No? So the main one is coming up behind the person, okay? coming up behind them. Uh, what if she had the uh, weapon in the other hand? Okay, first time I think she had it in her right hand. Just come over to here. Okay, let's imagine she's got it in her left hand this time. Okay, I'm coming up behind her. Same thing again here, all right. Pulling her back, pulling her arm back at the same time. All right, pulling her arm back at the same time. Sliding my hand down to her hand and grabbing hold, okay? What I normally do here is called a monkey grip, okay? So my thumb is not going over her wrist, okay? I normally do a monkey grip, which is all four fingers and my thumb are all on this side and pulling back this way, okay? All right, that's how I normally do it. Can you do a full grip like that? Yes, you can, but it just feels like you just don't have that same amount of pulling power to pull the person back. So I like to use, come through, grab the hand, and just slide my whole hand down, and grab their wrist here, and just apply pressure on the um, arm bar, okay? So it doesn't matter which uh, side the weapon is on, you can attack either side, okay? We need to get control of that weapon, okay? You, there's no sense going like this. If I just came around, okay, and I put my, put my lower fist into her back, or hand into her back, here, and come round and pull her back, she could easily just bring that out and go clonk, clonk, clonk. That's no good. You've got to get control of that, this arm here, okay? And it's really important that when you come in, you see where the, the brick is on this side? I, if I'm attacking this left side, I'm coming in with my right leg, in between her legs here, coming over, grabbing. You can see here where I'm hooking onto my body. So there's no, try and pull your arm out. It's hard for her, okay? Because if I had a, just, if I come over like that and she pulls her arm out, it's gonna come out. So we come over and we hook it onto our body just very briefly and slide our arm down. Or slide our hand down, okay? So I've got my right foot here because I want my main part of my centre here attacking this arm. I want the power here, okay? Now if it was on the other side, if she had the brick on the other side, 
I'd come through with my left leg forward, just come back down this way, Teresa, so they can see. I'd come, I'd come through with my left leg forward here, coming over and attack this arm. So my centre now is facing the arm with the weapon in it. Again, to the left hand side, hold it on the left hand side. Okay, if she had it on the left hand side, I'd be coming through with my right leg, okay, here, right? And it's quick. You need to come in, wham, okay, to get the person. Um, another one, just for the same, same technique, imagine if Teresa was here, okay, and she had the weapon up like this and she's smashing it this way. She's not standing down here with, she doesn't have her arm down, she's actually up here and she's whacking it. It's the same thing, okay? We come in from behind and it's here, right? And we pull the arm down and get them into the same position, okay? So when the arm's coming over, just bring the arm up, so like you're whacking something, okay? And we're coming through and we're grabbing, okay? And pulling the arm into ourselves and then sliding the arm down, okay? Sometimes I'll slide the whole forearm down until I get to here, okay? So we need our centre facing that weapon hand so that you've got that power. Remember, always keep it in our centre, nice and tight in our centre, okay, to give us that, that power. Maintain your balance through your stance. Make sure you've got a good stance. Pull them off balance so they lose power, okay? Okay, that's pretty much it. There's, there's really, um, um, you know, not much else we can do. Um, when you're placing the person under under arrest or detaining them, um, if you don't want them to get away, we can suck them in. We can suck the person in. For example, Teresa. Okay, let's imagine that I wanted to suck her in, I didn't want her to get away. She wouldn't put the put the weapon down that she's damaging stuff with. But I don't see her as a complete threat to me. She's got it in her right hand. So I'm thinking, okay, she must be right-handed, more than likely. So if I can take out her right hand, um, then, it, it, then I should be able to get control over her quite easily, okay? What I want to do is take that weapon out of her right hand without doing it myself. I want her to do that. Okay, so I might say, oh, you can't really be doing that, eh? So you're just doing it because you want to? Yeah. All right, well, it's not mine, so three days. Okay, and we've got her here. All right, so what have I done here? Similar sort of thing as we've done in the previous one. I've, I've sucked her in, basically. I've said, all right then. I'm really in stance, but I'm like, okay then, sweet ass, here. She's, in order to shake my hand, she's had to put the, put the weapon in her other hand, okay? So, and then all I've done is I've quickly pulled her, okay? Spun her around, turned her centre, okay? Pushed her back, and then I've come up, and I've grabbed her hand quickly, okay? From the other side, She's got the weapon in her right hand. Gone. Oh well, you've made a bit of a mess there, haven't you? Hey? So I might be using a bit of humour. Okay? Oh, you've made a bit of a mess. You've done a good job, man. On that car, eh? Whoo! Good job, man. Good job. Good job. Okay, here. Alright? And drop the weapon. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Okay, from here I could control it. Okay, I could bring her arm up to here. Okay, um, I could just maintain her here. I could take it down to the ground. All right, I could move her away from here and put her down on the ground and just hold her there until the police arrive. Okay, contact the police ASAP. Easy. Okay, no harm done. When would we make that kind of decision? To, to do that, to get, get that close to getting a handshake, that would depend on the circumstances. It would depend on the 
atmosphere. Okay? You can see how I was like just having a bit of a laugh about it with what she'd just done, the damages she just caused, you know, whoo, you know, and letting her guard down and then bang. Control. Okay, without hurting the person, fast, efficient, and without hurting the person. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that and we're gonna move into the next video, which is um restraining a person from uh, doing uh, self-harm or harm to others. Thanks for coming along. Cheers. Bye-bye.